Hi yogis and welcome. It's Avani of the Kriya Yoga Academy and today I'll be guiding you through a yin plus restorative class to encourage creativity and deep rest. It will be useful to have a bolster or pillow with you for today's practice as well as two blocks and three or even four blankets. You can never have too many in a nice deep restorative practice. So prepare to come into the first posture, which will be a yin butterfly pose. You can bring your feet to touch one another in the center. If you'd like to have a little cushion or padding for your ankles, you can take a blanket underneath them. They might be closer into your groin or a little bit wider and further out, more like a wide diamond or omega shape. A block underneath each outer hip, each outer knee can really help if you're feeling too much sensation for the hips. And then prepare to come forward by softening your belly and really rounding your back. As you land into forward fold, you might allow your head to hang out in space. A little bit of traction for the next spine. You might want to stack up your blocks and rest your forehead there if that feels more supported for you. Remember in the yin portion of the practice, there will be a little bit of an edge, some sensation. So if you're not feeling it with the support of the blocks, you can lose those and maybe come all the way forward. Check in that the gesture of your shoulders, your hands is soft and surrendered. And so once you've settled in and found the expression that's going to work best in your body, a little bit of an edge that's sustainable, we'll settle in for three and a half minutes total in this first shape. And the gallbladder lines as well as urinary bladder lines will be impacted in this posture. If you feel like you want a little bit more sensation on inner groin, you can bring your feet a little bit closer or more for outer thighs, bring your feet a little bit further away. It's gonna be where you really get into the gallbladder line. This is a really good one that you can also incorporate into like a reading practice or a studying practice to get the benefits of the posture. So smooth out your breath. You can observe with witness awareness what's coming up, what types of sensations, or are you able to hone in on or notice any sensation at all? As you settle in, see if there's any areas, any zones in your body you can allow to get softer, to get heavier. Lots of folks are accustomed to a, a tighter or more active variation of this or the, the yang style baddha konasana. And one of the deep challenges in yin is to really soften everything down. So as we explore postures to help enhance, invoke, or encourage creativity, this may be one of the challenges for you. So how can I creatively approach a familiar shape with a new set of eyes or a new inner eye with greater softness? We have just about a minute left to go here. So if there's some space that has opened up, maybe you allow your body, your trunk to drop lower or heavier. If the edge feels like it's become a little bit too intense, you always have liberty to adjust your edge by backing off. This is really deep abduction or external rotation for the hips. So keep a very honest observation and roll into three final breaths without hurry. Slow and smooth. As you round into your next inhale, flip your hands, press into your palms, little cat paws, walk yourself up to a tall seat, and then perhaps use the support of your hands 
to help draw your knees back together at midline. And as a counter, take your feet out wide and rest your knees together onto one another in the middle. A tall seated constructive rest. So a very, very slight internal rotation for just a few breaths. Maybe popcorn the knees, you can extend your legs out long. Prepare to transition into the next shape. Make sure you have one block handy nearby. Move anything else you may have gathered out of the way and then come to rest all the way back onto the floor. Leave your knees bent and rest onto the soles of your feet. We'll head into the yin expression of Setu Bandhasana, a pontoon pose. Take your block, roll the crests of your hips up and off the earth. I recommend that all yogis begin on the lowest setting in order to explore the different variations, but you can certainly take it up to the second height or even all the way up to the tallest height if you notice that you need a little bit more edge once you've explored in your own body. So we'll be hanging out here for three minutes. So listen in. Perhaps if what you need is a bit more edge, lengthen out one leg and then the other. You can relax hips and quads and hamstrings so that your big toes perhaps roll toward the outer corners of your mat. soften and entirely settle in we have about two and a half minutes left in this next pose bridge pose particularly the pontoon variation with legs extended in front of you is going to be really lengthening through the hip flexors and the quadriceps and a subtle or more intense back bend depending on the variation that you've chosen Any sensation along the sacrum and lower spine is going to be assisting you in stimulating kidney and urinary bladder meridians, which are connected to the element of water, which is also the element ruled by the sacral chakra. And this is really what we're focusing on in today's practice, that center of sensuality, of creativity, of those ideas that bloom and blossom forward once all of your safety requirements have been met of the root chakra we start to get up into exploring all of that which brings us pleasure the art the music the practices the people at any point throughout the posture if you need to Deepen your edge, you can extend your legs. If you need to soften your edge, you can bend your legs and rest onto the soles of your feet. There is about one minute remaining. Remember to follow the movement of your breath with your mind. If you feel your mind getting overactive, these deep states of relaxation are vital for us tuning into our creativity. Restoration is required in order to tap into that fountain, to all the creative juices. Take three more nice, long and unhurried breaths here. And in the next inhale or two, you can press into all edges of both feet. Float your hips just enough to slide your block out from underneath you. Set it down and off to the side and come to rest your spine all the way down to the earth. 
might want to rest your knees onto one another at center, this time a reclined, supported rest. Something that feels neutral and restful. We'll pause for a gentle rebound and rock your knees from side to side. And as you're ready, take a roll down toward one side in a soft and restful fetal position. And you'll press yourself up slowly from there toward a seat where we can set up and transition to the next posture. As you come up toward a seat, make sure you have your two blocks or your sturdy books within reach. You'll also want one blanket rolled really nice and long or folded really nice and long about the length of your mat, or you can take two blankets. I'll show the setup here that we're going for at the top edge of the mat. You'll want a little bit of space between your two blocks and then set them up right in front of you. You'll want to orient yourself the long way on your mat so that your knees have extra cushion. Land your bolster or pillow on top of your two blocks and then with those two blankets, they're folded as a square, one to support each knee. Or remember if you're working with one blanket, take a nice long rectangular fold and put it lengthwise on your mat. Touch your big toes together behind you for tadpole variation or wiggle your feet out wide. Come to the big toe edge and lean your weight forward. You can crisscross your forearms between the blocks for frog pose. As you work to settle in, again, negotiate the amount of edge that you would like to have or that you need. If you feel like a little bit more would work better for you, you can lower down. You might take away the block closest to you. You may take away both blocks. If you take out just one, it will be a little bit of a wedge shape. To lean down a little bit lower. You can even take away all the props all together and land your trunk and your heart right down onto the earth. We'll be here for a total of three minutes. So whatever variation you sink into, make sure that three minutes feels accessible in your body. And then settle in and soften down. It's just over two and a half minutes left to go in this next posture. This is our last yin yoga pose or the last edgier pose of the practice. So allow yourself some space to really drop in. This is quite a, a deep opener for groin and line of the hip, the adductors. And it's going to get into the lines that run along the, that same inner line. So the spleen, meridian, the liver, the kidney, the kidney again, you're getting into that water element connected to hips and pelvis and groin and low back and your reproductive organs, this home of the sacral chakra, Svadhisthana. Smooth your breath and follow its cycle. take three minutes total in this posture but some folks like to take up to five remember gravity is really um, having a maximum effect during yin postures and this one holds quite a bit of intensity for most bodies so always give yourself permission to back off or lighten up as needed to sometimes we get really beautiful creative downloads or insights when we can drop into a space of silence and begin 
to round into your last few breaths. Really notice if your mind wants to jump forward in time and space. Stay present with all that is. Three more full cycles. Unhurried and intentional. Start to untangle your arms from between your blocks, slide your palms underneath your shoulders. Touch your big toes together behind you and slowly lift up. You can wiggle your knees in toward a tabletop and then maybe all the way in together toward a tall kneeling seat and go ahead and set your equipment, your props off to the side. We all need everything within reach to set up for the next pose, but first come to settle into a seat that feels neutral and take a few rounds of breath. And then find one blanket folded as a square. Take it off the top edge of your mat. You'll want a second blanket folded in once more from the square to a tighter rectangle within reach off the top edge of your mat. Take your bolster angled out diagonally from the lower third of your mat, as you can see that I'm doing here, and then give your other blanket another unfold so that it's a bigger, wider rectangle across the midsection of your mat, and then one roll or one fold in. This will be padding for your outer hip. Come to land down to the left side of your body. This blanket that's at the top edge of your mat, I, I like to, I require an extra roll or fold to support the weight of my head. You might also want to take a block in and incorporate it. It's important that your neck spine feels comfortable. As we transition into the restorative portion of the practice, you really want to look to optimize your comfort and steer away from too much edge or strain. This additional folded blanket might come between your forearms or your upper arms and then reach your right leg back behind you, bend into your left knee in the front so that your lower body makes a warrior one, but remember a restorative, a soft, kind of a lazy warrior one in your lower body. And then both of your arms can reach forward straight out in front of you or a little bit higher. That's really gonna depend on your shoulder mobility and what your shoulder joints allow for. Remember you want to leave space for this to be a very soft and relaxed shape and so really pay attention if that youngness is coming out if there's a desire to move into efforting It'll be four full minutes in this shape on either side and in the restorative portion of the practice this is really where we get to consider nothing else above our own personal comfort so what would make your physical form feel safer and more comfortable, make your emotional, your mental form feel safer and more comfortable. Remember once we have these root chakra checklist items taken care of, the root, the safety, then we're able to drop into a space where there is time to roam. You may even notice your mind wandering a little bit. And in this practice, that's perfectly fine. That means you're likely dropping toward theta waves in your brain waves. This is a more deeply relaxed state. It's a place where your creativity can come out and roam. It's the place from where we can daydream and wander. It's a very beautiful open field for your creative energy. So without getting too attached to what may be bubbling up toward the surface, also allow yourself to kind of swim in it. At any point in time, if something feels too edgy, you can adjust the position of your bolster where your right leg is resting behind you or take your blanket between your upper arms or your forearms so your shoulders are supported. You may notice that your breath is a little quieter, more 
shallow, maybe even a yawn or a sigh finds its way into your practice. Breathe into it, lean into it. You have about two minutes left on this first side. Notice what it feels like to even give yourself permission to let your mind roam. We can get very strict or particular even with our form of meditation. Consider a soft focus, soft focus of your mind, a soft focus behind your eyes, a soft body, and soft hips, this sacral chakra svadhisthana home of feeling, of emotion, of pleasure, of sensuality and intimacy and connection, a creative place from where we connect to one another. Notice subtle waves, and flutters, and shifts in the length of your physical form as your breath moves through you. There's nothing in particular that it should be or has to be. It's a blank canvas of experience. yourself five to ten more breaths on this side without changing anything else just a landmark of awareness and when you're ready to soften out bend into your right knee slide it forward so you come to sideline with bent knees with your upper arm, with your right arm, you can press yourself really gently up toward a seat. And I'm going to flip to the opposite edge of my mat so that folks following along at home can see the equipment set up a little bit better. But for you, it might be easier to simply roll over onto your opposite hip and bring the bolster over to the opposite side of your mat. So remember to fold up that blanket that's going to support your hips. Four minutes is a long time to stay resting on those bony structures, so make sure you have some support there. And the blanket that supports your head and neck, you can add an extra roll or fold or a block. This time around, bend your right knee and lengthen out your left leg behind you so that both your knee and your ankle are supported on top of that bolster. And the bolster is going to be at a little bit of an angle so that your lower body shape takes something similar to a warrior one in the lower body. And then your upper body, your arms can be either straight forward from your shoulders and your heart, or they might be reaching up a little bit higher, more similar to that warrior one expression. You can also take your extra folded blanket between your forearms or upper arms if that provides some support for your shoulder joints. And remember as you soften in, you'll be four full minutes. So really allow yourself time to set yourself up properly, effectively, Give yourself permission to be comfort seeking. It's so special that these creative qualities really need rest, need restoration, need a inward attention, need sleep in order to come out and to play. So what a deep gift if you're working on stoking creativity, the one of the best practices you can take on is to slow down, get soft, get comfortable, really drop into those theta waves. 
and stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. Find a deep state of relaxation. I feel like one of a really great example of this is a lot of folks kind of landing into these really beautiful life altering creative ideas or plans during the moments of the day that they're able to relax and soften like in the shower our creativity is stoked by relaxation by softness by a place where Control is not necessary. Softening is welcomed. So we have under two minutes to explore your inner world. Or maybe you've even softened away from any sort of active exploration and you're really just dropping into a place of being. The right of the sacral chakra is to feel. So perhaps it's that simple space to open into all that you feel. Smooth your breath. Scan your body and notice if there's anywhere you might be able to soften more or sink in a bit more deeply. Begin your journey now into five or ten more rounds of breath. If you're feeling very nourished here, remember in in restorative practice, you always have the option to stay. So we're not creating much edge. We're building much flexibility. You're just developing deep comfort. So allow yourself that if you found it. For those that are ready to transition out, begin to bend into your left knee, bring it forward to meet your bent right knee. Rest in side lying for a breath or two, set any props out of the way. And then press yourself up slowly, nurturing minimal effort. Come upward toward a seat. And as you arrive, set lots of your equipment off to the side. We'll change the setup a little bit for this next pose. So you'll want to have both of your blocks and bring them to the front edge of the mat. Leave some distance between the two blocks for your head to fall. And take one of your blankets over each block. So we're gonna take an angel wings variation that's a little bit more restorative. So you want those block edges to be really nice and cushioned. You can take a bolster behind you toward the back edge of your mat. And then maybe you leave that third folded blanket across the center of your mat to support or cushion your the bones of your hips or your pubic bone. You can rest your ankles across the bolster slide the blanket right underneath your hips and then angle in your blocks as much or as little as needed to support the humeral head of your arm so the upper arm bone and the front of your shoulder is really supported by the block you can leave your arms resting down low alongside your ribs let your third eye point touch into the earth It'll be a whole five minute journey here in this next restorative shape. You can really enjoy 
tuning into, tapping into the imagination and the intuition and making contact with that third eye point, the Ajna Chakra. Center of imagination, a place from where you're able to actually see and visualize colors and images in your mind. And before anything can become reality, it must first be an image or a vision. And so we feed the third eye chakra, a point just between the two brows part of you, that eye that sees all that is unseen, that eye that is open during dream time, the all-seeing. You may notice that belly down, your breath moves a bit more into the back side of your body. It might feel as if you're breathing into the backs of your ribs articulations where they connect to the spine and if you're resting down to just one ear or the other be sure to flip to the opposite ear about midway through and I'll let you know when we get to about the midway mark to do is soften, surrender, and sink into a space of deep presence, full breath, make sure you're comfortable, and allow your body to take this space for silence, for quiet. You're about midway through the hold. In the case that you're resting to only one ear or the other, be sure to switch sides as gently as you can. Land softly and then snuggle back into relative stillness and comfort as soon as you can. And breathe. We have just under a minute left here. So knowing that transition is coming soon, allow yourself to stay fully present with all that is. You can scan your 
system and decipher whether or not staying exactly as you are is the best choice for your body, for your practice. Or if preparing to transition, take a last few breaths. So slowly, press your hands into the earth and roll back, wave-like, draw your sits bones towards your heels for a child's pose, just a breath or two. And come to wiggle down off your pillow or bolster, rest your knees onto the cushion of your blanket. Set your props off to the side. And we'll prepare for the next posture. So those that are moving through into the next posture, you can take one blanket folded to a long rectangle, take it across the long way of your mat, and then a second one, but leave a little bit of space so that you're creating an, a ledge. And then you'll find the third blanket, same fold, nice long rectangle rectangle. So rather than stacking them all up in a neat pile, you're going to kind of layer them back so there's a little bit of a ledge to catch the crease of your hips. And then the top blanket, fold it in half so that you create a fourth tier to that ledge. And then land your upper body right there. So you leave your bolster exactly as it was to catch your ankles. And then this little ledge is going to kind of land into the crease of your thigh or between your thigh and your trunk. If you'd like, you can take a block underneath your forehead. Your arms can come toward a cactus type shape overhead. Or you can fold your hands in front of you and rest your third eye over your folded hands. Or surfboard pose. Remember to take plenty of time to settle into your final destination because as you land you'll land in for six full minutes on this next pose just as with the previous pose you also have the option to rest down to one ear or the other if you prefer that rather than landing on the third eye point you just make sure you're swapping to the opposite side about midway through so that any sort of length or edge that you're receiving in the muscles around cervical spine or into the shoulders are getting that even pull on both sides. Drop now into your breath. This is a very grounding shape. Belly down. As much of you as possible is touching the earth and supported in some way. See if there's anywhere you can give in to that support a little bit more thoroughly, a little bit more wholly, and receive. And dropping into a place of receptivity through relaxation brief moment of pause allows us also to be receptive to those ideas and downloads as they arise. I like to be particularly gentle with myself during the restorative practice and give in to those little shifts and wiggles that sometimes come up. What's important is that you're not finding yourself in too much of a place of efforting or rigidity in your practice. So even if that means mentally you're too focused on a strict sense of stillness, you may not necessarily be landing into that which is most comfortable. Allow yourself to luxuriate in this practice. It is really going to give you the juiciest expression. So you're 
coming up on about the midway mark of the posture. And if you are resting down on one ear or the other, this is a good spot to swap to the opposite side. Do so with the most minimal effort possible. Take all the time you need. back into an observation of your breath. Just about a minute and a half left here. So observe if there's any way you can make yourself even more comfortable to sink into these final few moments. Maybe it's an anchoring of your mind back onto your breath. Maybe it's a shift that's even more subtle, a softening of your eyes behind their lids or a softening of the facial expression you find yourself in. Begin to round into very conscious last five to 10 cycles of breath here so that our transition has permission to be uber slow, five to 10 breaths. somewhere within the next two or three rounds. Begin to slide your hands back to rest and root underneath your shoulders. And take an unforced and unhurried lift upward. You can set your top blanket off to the side and the second blanket as well fold it twice it comes back to that small rectangle slide it off to the side and then take the bottom blanket and once again cross it over the short length of your mat right around the middle this will once again be support for your hips and for your low back Take your bolster out at a diagonal or an, a little bit of an angle once again off the left edge of your mat and have a block and blanket behind you to support head, neck, and shoulders as options. Go ahead and come to rest all the way down to the floor. Be sure that the blanket lands about at your waist or low back. I like to fold that blanket that's head support in for neck support and then cross your right leg over midline, extend it out long so that the big toe edge lands onto your bolster and ensure that both your knee and your ankle land 
or a restorative revolve big toe pose will be four minutes on each side. So settle in. You might need to take a bit more or a bit less of an angle. The bolster or pillow that supports your right leg might need to be a little higher or a little bit lower, particularly if you're feeling a lot of edge in your outer right hip. You can keep your heart, your shoulders, your gaze forward, upward toward the sky. And drop in. And just about 30 seconds into this first side. So if you need a little bit longer to kind of wiggle and fidget and settle in, make sure you're finding optimal comfort for your own body. And if it feels like still too much of an edge for your outer right hip, you might choose an expression or variation that's more restorative for you, like a side-lying twist with your right knee and ankle supported. We get into the hips from a different angle now, once again, enlivening, nourishing Swadhisthana, that sacral chakra, it's represented by the color orange if you need another anchor for your mind it's a place of passion it's like the fuel for all of your creative energy when we create or write or draw make art dance follow our passion and our pleasure that whole creative creative process is unfolding from the sacral center about midway through the pose if there's anything you may need to adjust or better support in your practice in your body about one minute more of stillness of conscious breath begin to count down either five or ten rounds depending on the length of your own breath as long as it's unhurried it's just right somewhere within the next two or three rounds of breath. Allow the lowest part of your belly to get a little bit firm. And start to bend into your right knee. Slowly draw it towards your heart until your low back and lumbar lands back down to the blanket, to the mat. Can grab your bolster and bring it off the opposite edge of your mat. Remember, it's going to extend out at a little bit of an angle, a little bit of a diagonal. Bend into your left knee and extend your right leg out long, toes to the front edge of your mat. And then, like a soft and kind of straight legged twist, take your left leg straight across midline. Make sure that both your knee and your ankle are supported on your bolster. Your arms can be out wide with gaze either to the sky with your neck and 
head supported, another folded blanket, or maybe gaze out over your left fingertips. Take the shifts you need, the support you need, four full minutes here. posture to settle into that creative energy of sacral chakra of the hips outer inner and low back this energetic center really allows us or affords us these lessons these life lessons of letting go and of feeling change and transformation within our body in our practices, within our relationships, the idea of movement, barometer of movement. And so particularly if you're feeling a little stagnant, a little stuck, practices to get into this zone may invite you back into a little bit more of a sense of fullness or at least a, a sense of ease once again with change, with movement, with flow invite in once again your innate creative ability we're just a little over halfway through on this second side tune back in with your breath soften more begin really lifting your breath from your low belly or right from your pelvic floor up towards your collarbones five more nice full cycles Within the next round or two, get your low belly a little bit strong to support you in facilitating movement back toward midline, bend into your left knee, draw it close to your heart, swivel your hip back toward neutral. Lengthen out both of your legs. Perhaps you'd like to adjust the support that's underneath your head, neck, and shoulders. Perhaps you'd like to adjust the support that's underneath your low back and sits bones. Perhaps you'd like to pull in a pillow or bolster for underneath your knees. Find anything for final support and integration. Land down softly for Shavasana.
And as you soften into that space, try not to be too hard on yourself. If you don't land immediately into a meditative nothingness, Albert Einstein is quoted as saying that imagination is more important than knowledge. If you find your mind wandering just a bit, allow yourself to drop wholly into the colors of your imagination and pause here for as long as you'd like. For those that would like to explore integration in Shavasana for just a bit longer, you can pause the video here or just stay down onto the earth as it feels complete to wiggle and spread your toes and perhaps trace your fingertips with your thumb some sort of hearty stretch, a reawakening movement that is entirely you, creative movement, open space, blank canvas as you reawaken. Roll your way to your favorite side for several breaths. in your own time, press upward toward a seat. No urgency, take your time. As you land, crisscross your ankles, find something that's comfortable. And please take creative liberty here for any final gesture that brings your practice to completion with gratitude and compassion. 
Thank you so much for joining. Jai Bhagwan. Namaste.